students a very good afternoon to you today we are going to learn about an interesting effect which is called the inert pair effect so you may have heard about the name uh, but uh, today i am going in very detail about uh, what is inert pair effect why this inert pair effect is happening and uh, uh, actually some practical example of inert pair effect now uh, I should first tell you that which are the elements which show the inert pair effect. For that, look at this periodic table. Here, we have some blocks like S block, T block, D block and F block elements. So, after the D block elements in P block, there are some elements which are called post transitional elements. And uh, these are basically P block elements and belong to group 13, 14, 15, 16 and the heavier elements. These are the heavier elements. As we are going down the group, these are called heavier elements and these elements only show the inert pair effect. And one point I should tell you that the inert pair effect is very prominent as we go down the group. That is, if we go down from gallium to indium to thallium, it will be very prominent in thallium now what is the inert pair effect so for group 13 14 15 and 16 we have one group oxidation state like for group 13 it is plus 3 for group 14 it is plus 4 for group 15 it is plus 5 and for group 16 it is plus 6 this is uh, known to all of you with this group oxidation state for the heavier elements another oxidation state we can see what is that that is two less than the group oxidation state that is for group 13 it is plus one along with plus three for group 14 it is plus two along with plus four and for group 15 it is plus three along with plus five for group 16 it is plus four along with plus six that is if the group oxidation state is g it will show another oxidation state which is G minus 2. These two oxidation states will be shown by these heavier elements. Now, why it is called the inert pair effect? For that, we need to know the general electronic configuration of these elements. And this is NS2, NP6 where we have a s2 pair of electrons and here px means x is equal to 1 to 6 as it is a p orbital it can accommodate up to 6 electrons so x could be 1 to 6 now in this ns to np6 configuration if this s2 pair remains inert remains inert for the formation of bonds that is called the inert pair effect like if g is equal to 2 plus x so g minus 2 will be obviously x like for example in group 13 we have thallium you have seen and in group 13 the group oxidation state is 3 so g minus 2 will be equal to 1 and that is and uh, g minus 2 will be very prominent in case of these heavier congeners but uh, why this is happening that i am going to explain you later but before that, we need to know how this G is uh, attended by these elements. So, here I have shown you the NS2, NP1 electrons. NS2 is this paired up electron and N NP1, so one electron is present in the Px orbital. This is for group 13. But you can see this is not possible to form three covalent bonds here like with this kind of configuration. So we need to promote this electron from this S orbital to this P orbital like we will be promoting one electron to the P orbital. Now we have three unpaired electrons and these three electrons will be paired up with uh, electrons from the other atoms there will be hybridization and after the hybridization three covalent bonds will be formed and these three bonds will form and a bond energy will be released here another energy term is involved here 
which you may not be knowing but i should tell you for promoting this electron from s orbital to the p orbital some amount of energy will be needed and this energy is called the promotional energy what is that that is promotional energy and this amount of energy will be given to one element to promote the electron now this bond energy is a energy which is released if a stable bond is formed so this process is not very easy to promote one electron from one orbital to another this bond formation will make this process possible so the amount of bond energy should be more than the promotional energy and this promotional energy will be compensated by this bond energy and now i can tell you about the definition of the inert pair effect what is that certain post transitional elements they, those are group 13 14 15 and 16 elements exhibiting a valency two unit less than the corresponding group valency that is g minus 2 due to inertness of s2 pair of electrons is known as inert pair effect right now we should go in detail why this inert pair effect is taking place for that let us look at the electronic configuration of these elements carefully these are the valence electronic configuration and you see in group 13 it is 2s2 2p1 group 14 for carbon it is 2s2 2p2 for group 15 nitrogen it is 2s2 2p3 and group 16 for oxygen it is 2s2 2p4 and as we are going down the group it is 3s2 3p1 then 4s2 4p1 5s2 5p1 and 6s2 6p1 but if you look very closely you see everywhere there is a s2 pair of electron present and as we are going down it is uh, becoming from 2s2 to 3s2 to 4s2 to 5s2 to 6s2 gallium is in period 4 indium is in period 5 and thallium is in period 6 and i have told you that uh, for these elements like for thallium lead and bismuth this inert pair effect is very prominent compared to uh, indium tin and antimony that means this uh, 6s2 pair of electrons have something different effect to show the inert pair effect we will go in detail about that for that here are the electronic configuration of these elements like indium and thallium they are in group 13 you know for thallium you see the electronic configuration is xenon and this 4f14 5d10 6s2 6p1 for indium it is krypton then 4d10 5s2 5p1 so what is the difference between these two elements electronic configuration in thallium we have both f orbital filled up and d orbital filled up but in indium it is only the d orbital which is completely filled so this is the difference and this difference is present in tin lead or antimony bismuth everywhere you see in lead you have f electrons along with the d electrons in bismuth also you have f electrons along with d electrons but in tin you have only d electrons or in antimony you have only d electrons so this is a very prominent difference why this difference is uh, giving um, a uh, effect like inert pair effect for discussing that you need to know about the shielding capacity of these electrons uh, shielding effect you know very well you have learned it previously that the shielding effect of s electrons is greater than p electrons is greater than d electrons is greater than f electrons that is f electron is a very poor shielder of nuclear charge that is if d or f electrons are present the nuclear charge will be very less shielded 
and what will be the effect the effect will be that there will be a great attraction force between the nucleus and the valence cell electrons and this is happening here in thallium or lead or bismuth you have both kind of electrons f and d f and d f and d so this combined effect combined shielding effect they are shielding very less the nuclear charge and uh, for that what is happening this 6s pair of electron is getting attracted towards the nucleus and it is not taking part in the bonding so this is a very important effect and this is giving rise to inert pair effect other than that there is a relativistic effect for that what is happening the 6s pair of electrons for the heavier congeners it is uh, getting very close to the nucleus and 6s orbital is contracted towards the nucleus so the effect is again same the s2 pair of electrons do not want to take part in the bonding and another thing is again we have to go to the bond energy and promotional energy because of relativistic effect what is happening i have told you that the 6s orbital is getting getting contracted and it is going very near to the nucleus and what is happening for that the energy difference between the s and the p orbital is becoming more so more energy will be needed for promoting this electron from s orbital to the p orbital that is one thing and the another thing is less amount of bond energy released as we go down the group the size of the atom increases that you know very well so what will be the effect that will uh, make less effective overlap with the orbital of the other atoms and for that the amount of energy released due to the bond formation will be less so what will be happening the amount of bond energy released will not be able to compensate the promotional energy so this is also a big reason why the ns2 pair of electrons are remaining as inert so i have summarized here the points why the inert pair effect is happening so first one is a screening effect by d and f electrons ns greater than np greater than nd greater than nf d and f electrons are poor uh, shielder of nuclear charge and then the relativistic effect contraction of s orbital for heavier elements is causing inert pair effect and another thing is bond formation energy and promotional energy so relativistic effect is causing the energy gap between 6s and 6p orbital more and the promotional energy for electron will be more for that reason and the bond formation energy is less for heavier elements due to the less effective overlap and which is um, actually because of the less amount it is not able to compensate the promotional energy so you have to remember all these three points to explain the inert pair effect now i am going to give you some examples everyday examples of the inert pair effect here you see i have written some of the elements and in their various oxidation states like for tin i have written plus 2 and it is going to plus 4 so what is happening here tin plus 2 is getting oxidized to tin plus 4 and this is a feasible reaction now for lead although both of them are uh, in group 14 for lead it is plus 4 which is getting reduced to plus 2 oxidation state this reaction is feasible so why this kind of difference um, in the chemical properties of these two elements this is only because of the inert pair effect you see lead lead is the heavier congener of group 14 and it is happy in the plus 2 oxidation state while tin is not that much happy and for this reaction you can understand that tin in plus 2 oxidation state will be a very good reducing agent as it is getting oxidized to plus 4 state it is reducing other elements and uh, on the other hand lead plus 4 is a very good oxidizing agent so it will be able to oxidize other elements So, so these are the examples which we see 
in the laboratory essential to is a very good reducing agent if we take iron in plus 3 oxidation state and then add essential to in that iron plus 3 will get reduced to iron plus 2 and tin will be getting oxidized to tin 4 plus and on the other hand pbo2 or pbcl4 they are very good oxidizing agent so you see uh, lead dioxide when added to hcl it is forming pbcl2 chlorine and water so what is happening chlorine is having minus one oxidation state here and having zero oxidation state here so you can say very easily that it is getting oxidized instead lead is getting from plus four to plus two oxidation state now we can uh, discuss little bit about bismuth also you know, for bismuth it is plus five oxidation state which is very stable so sodium bismuthate is uh, a chemical compound which is used in the laboratory as a oxidizing agent so what is happening so bismuth is here in plus five oxidation state and when we add this kind of oxid oxidizing agent uh, in uh, like manganese plus 2 solution the manganese plus 2 gets oxidized to manganese MnO4 minus which is a uh, manganese is in plus 7 oxidation state and bismuth uh, plus 5 goes to bismuth plus 3 this is also very frequently used in the laboratory so these are few examples of inert pair effect i think you have understand now what is inert pair effect and it's uh, some of its um, uh, uses in the laboratory uh, so today we have learned about what is inert pair effect then why this inert pair effect is happening and also some practical example where we can see how the inert pair effect is affecting the chemical properties of some heavier congeners of group 13 14 15 and 16 elements so that's all for today students see you in the next class